for Tuesday, July 18th. If everybody could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Grigsby. Here. Mrs. McCarthy. Here. Mrs. Saxon. Here. Mrs. Tamira. Here. Mr. Baca. Here. Finalization of the agenda. Is there any, anything to add or remove? Uh, the agenda is final as presented. Thank you. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the written summary of the regular minutes for the meetings on June 6, 2023, June 12, 2023, June 19, 2023, June 20th, 2023, and June 26, 2023. Moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Saxon. Second by Ms. Tamira. Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Okay, go right into the superintendent. Thank you, President. Good tech guys, a minute to adjust. Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, I am looking forward to speaking to each of you about our district goals for the 23-24 school year. Almost looks great. Okay. All right. So, um, as you all are aware, we have six goals that we really try to work within as we think about the future of North Bridgeville and specifically how to help each one of our students continue to create their own pathways. And so, goal number one, as well as it should be, is to continue to improve student achievement. Not too many changes this year, but some things to bring to attention. As you are aware, this year, uh, we are continuing to work to train and support our students as it pertains to the new dyslexia law. Uh, we're also aware that this is an unfunded mandate, but our team, including Jackie Vance and Heather Miller, have been absolutely incredible in securing grant funding to um, not only give us all of the support and resources that we need to implement this now and have been for some time, um, and we're a little bit ahead of the curve here, uh, but also in that we were able to bring on board with grant funding a literacy coach uh, that will also help as it pertains to screening early, um, determining what students need in order to be successful, and ultimately looking at screeners and real-time data to determine how best to serve them. Um, in addition to that, we are uh, continuing to work on developing graduation pathways for all of our students. You know that last year we added uh, those graduation seals to our high school course of study. We are continuing uh, to add pathways. Um, the STEM pathway was well established. You saw our first graduates, graduates this past school year, and that was very exciting. We are continuing to work on some potential honors pathways that students will be eligible for. Um, at, in addition to looking at ways for our non-traditional students or students that have uh, different needs, uh, the ability to have ways to graduate uh, beyond what the state currently has in place. So we are excited to look forward and you'll hear a lot about that as our high school presents to you uh, later in the year. Goal number two is to foster positive relationships and collaborative working environment with all employees. Um, as you're aware, this past year, we had negotiated with our non-teachers union in a record five days. Um, it was extremely collaborative. It was very well done. Um, and again, it was a win-win situation for both the Board of Education and uh, the non-teachers union. So we're very proud of that. This year, we look forward to negotiating with our teachers union and hopefully we'll have a similar outcome that we had this time around. Goal number three, to effectively manage district operations. Again, not too much changing there, um, but we are looking to evaluate some of the safety plans that have been in place, um, things that you're all aware of, but uh, meeting on site at some of our locations, some of our evacuation sites has really brought some questions to light. In fact, most recently uh, we met to determine a new reunification spot for some of our parents. And so we are working to continue to train our staff 
and our students on safety protocol and ultimately effectively communicate that with the community. Of course, within the things that we're able to communicate in a crisis situation. Uh, goal number four, is that where I am? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Goal number four is to uphold financial accountability, transparency, and responsibility. Um, you're all very familiar with uh, some of those items that uh, we face as we continue to uh, look ahead to the future of North Ridgeville and how to be financially solvent, as well as provide the very best education, the very best setting for our staff to work um, in order to really push North Ridgeville forward. Um, and all of that is something that is a, a balancing act. Um, you know, this year we were able to look to not necessarily replace every single position that resigned, giving us some, some money to uh, work with given our current financial situation. And that has been helpful. I know we are going to talk a little bit about some of those other cost saving measures, um, but again, we are working to do everything we can without the support that currently we need. Goal number five, to build upon the confidence and support of our community. Uh, speaking of getting support, you know, really how can we establish a grassroots efforts, effort here in this community to understand the importance of schools in North Ridgeville um, is really what we are hoping to accomplish. And you know, it has to go beyond this group of people. And so you know, how can we establish key communicators throughout North Ridgeville that can help um, within their different developments within their different areas um, that can really garner that support again in a grassroots efforts. And then finally, goal number six, um, probably, you know, something that will also come out in tonight's meeting, but looking to each of you to ultimately approve a second resolution to go forward and build a new high school. Uh, we did try to get all of our needs accomplished within one bond issue this past May and November, both of which were not successful. And after community surveys realized that we need to start somewhere and most people would be supportive of a new high school, um, not necessarily supportive of an elementary school, which is why we are proposing that we move forward with a high school and then look to find space determine how to best utilize space at our elementary school, knowing that we are still in a situation where high school doesn't solve all of our district needs. We will continue to work with those district partners to design those facilities. We will include in that maintenance and transportation, which of course will solve some of the challenges that we're currently facing, both with transportation and our maintenance garage, um, and ultimately looking to determine where best to place mobile trailers and space at our elementary schools, um, knowing that we will need that moving forward. That will be home. So thank you again for the opportunity to talk to you about what we are looking forward to for the 23-24 goals. Um, again, as, as we do every year, we look forward to talking to you in a few months to talk about where we are, how we are moving toward accomplishing these goals, and then at the end of next year to talk to you about how we accomplish goals and what we're looking forward to for the following year. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. School start date is right around the corner. It is. Do you know when it is? Or it would be August 24th. 24th. And so staff come back the 21st. 21st. Thank you. August 29th for kindergarten. Will that be convocation day then? The 21st? Convocation day will be Monday, August 21st. And then um, you mentioned that negotiating with the teacher union. Mm -hmm. um, when do you suspect that would start? That is a great question. We are hoping to start earlier um, than we normally would, um, talking about getting our teams together in December to um, at least wrap our heads around a timeline and some ground rules, and then maybe near the end of January of 24, really moving toward resolution. Thank you. Absolutely. And then um, I think this question is for Mr. Younger in regards to safety. Um, we received some grant funding for some safety improvements. Yeah. Um, and I know we were making some of those improvements this summer at Liberty. Yeah. Can you tell us what the status is of those? Yeah, so the 
largest scale uh, projects that we were doing from a safety perspective are taking place at Liberty. And for those of you that have been in the building know that the classroom in each pod did not have doors into the actual classroom. So um, using some of that safety grant money, we were able to add doors into all those spaces. Uh, in fact, they are to be finished up here in the next week or so. We've been going over there. It makes a world of difference aesthetically and also just from a functionality standpoint, uh, quieting down those spaces. And then from a safety perspective, right? Uh, your staff can now close the doors in the event that they need to lock down. So that's moving along very well. Um, some other safety measures that are in place through the grant funding are ongoing and we anticipate that all to be wrapped up by the time school starts. Okay. I think it's important to note too, and, and Matt, I don't know what the final number was, but you know, that was a significant amount of money. And Mr. Decker was able to um, get a few different grants, um, upwards of $300,000 in order to make those things happen. Again, trying to free up the district funds that we have for the things that um, are happening with students in the classroom each and every day. So, great job to his team. And the other um, question I had about Liberty in um, regards to safety is those pods, obviously we know they have accordion doors between them. Um, have we, and I know some teachers open them to have larger space and to do collaboration. Um, have this, has there been any thought to walling off those um, rooms or are we using them more for collaboration? You know, I think that that's something There's a combination of both. Do. It is a combination. You know, we see lots of teachers who do utilize the space well, um, others who prefer to keep it a little more tight. Yeah. Um, so it really does depend. I think, you know, the idea of flexibility is something, you know, right. we do utilize a lot. And so, you know, if we are in a position where that becomes a, a building that we ultimately are not going to replace and, and add on to with trailers, that might be something to consider along the lines of, you know, like we have in this room. That could be a functional wall, but also, uh, you know, a wall that could be open and provide that space for collaboration if need be. Yeah, because I, I can't, I imagine those walls are original. They are. Yeah. The building, right? <laughs> <laughs> they are <Yeah. laughs> so I can't imagine there's much sound proofing in those. And I'm sure there's products that are available that are better in, nowadays. Not cheap, but yes. Right, of course not. <laughs> yes. Um, I will not. say, just having gone over there, the you know the walls and the doors, it doesn't look like it was bad. They they did a fantastic job designing how that would look. It almost looks as if they were there from the beginning. And and as Mr. Younger said, you know, it makes a world of difference aesthetically. But I think the sound quality and what the teachers and the students will experience in the classroom is going to be a world of difference um, from what they have been experiencing up until this point. So we're pretty excited about that. I think. Our teachers are going to be very happy and excited. So we're, we're grateful that we were able to provide that. So thank you. When, once that's like complete, complete, can we um, take a tour of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think any time at this point. Okay. Kind of need some spaces, but sure. Okay, great. Thank you. And to your point, Mr. Yunker, thank you. Um, the community is not aware of the safety measures. And quite frankly, we're not at liberty to share all the safety measures for the safety of our students but we obtain tens of thousands of dollars and grants on a regular basis by our entire administrative team. And I don't think we do uh, as good a job as we could of getting that out to the community, just how hard our administrative staff and work to obtain those grants. Um, school funding is what it is, unfortunately, but it, the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, whether it be curriculum or safety or, I mean, the ESSER funds and then the treasurer's department utilizing those things, keeping us compliant so that we're using them correctly. It, it just, it's an amazing job that every single one of you do and it's to the benefit of our community. So thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Matt, please, so thank you to those that are in attendance this evening. I just want the community to know we are getting your emails, we are getting your phone calls, and we are responding to them. And we're responding to them whether we pass them along to the right people to address your concerns. Um, I know there's been some changes that we've rolled out that have caused concern in our community, and I appreciate that. Um, the changes we made were changes that we identified that were going to be uh, 
unfortunately a necessity if the bond issue didn't pass. Um, we spent a little over a million dollars on eight trailers at the high school. We're looking at upwards of three million plus for the additional trailers we're gonna need due to the bond issue failing. Um, those are costs that come out of the general fund. Those, those aren't funds that we allocated for. Those aren't funds we anticipated. We anticipated we'd have the support of the community. And thank you to all those that did support us, that did vote yes for the bond issue. Um, but unfortunately, we were 23 votes short, um, which was disheartening considering half the people that voted in November in support of us didn't show up again in May. And if even a hundred of them had shown up, we wouldn't be having the conversation that we're having tonight. We wouldn't be instituting cost reducing measures that we've been forced to make. And there's not a single person sitting up here this evening that is happy with these measures that we are forced to make. Uh, there's savings that are associated with it. Um, the two mile radius will on average save the district $200,000 just in maintenance and fuel costs. Uh, approximately um, 400 and some thousand dollars because we're not purchasing additional buses. Uh, so that right there is $600,000. Um, Mr. Pacini's done an amazing job of forecasting how our district looks financially. And we don't have a lot of room in our budget for additional costs, especially additional costs that quite frankly is just throwing money away because these are temporary measures. These aren't long-term solutions. These are solutions that were forced to make in order to accommodate the growth of our district, our high school. Um, we got options here. If the bond issue passes here in November, then that changes the, some of the concerns we have at the high school. Right now, if the bond issue was to fail again in November, we're talking about millions of dollars of repairs to that high school for long-term long -term use. If it passes, we're still looking at a substantial amount of money, but not nearly as much money uh, because we can make band-aid approaches to the high school to get us through until a new high school is designed and built. Um, we understand the concern with the bus radius, children walking. By no means are we saying the kids should be walking down 83, but on Fort or Road or in the dark. And that's one of the reasons we partnered with Right at School to try to offer up solutions to parents. I, for one, am utilizing Right at School for my grandchildren. Um, that live with me. So two of my grandchildren, because of my work schedule, my wife's work schedule, we're utilizing that service. Um, so we're trying to address the needs that have been created by the bond issue failing. Uh, and again, we tried to get all this information out prior to the election, say, look, here's where we're at if this fails. Um, and that's where we're at currently. Uh, in the event that the high school passes, that moves us forward, but it still doesn't necessarily address the need of our elementary schools. Um, that's why there was an all-in approach to meet our needs, um, but it moves us in the right direction. The survey said that they would support both, but they wouldn't support a standalone elementary school, but they would support a standalone high school as far as a bond issue is concerned. So we said, okay, do we push forward with the same plan and run the risk of it losing again in November. So we decided we would go for the high school, lower millage, uh, not quite as expensive to the taxpayer in hopes that in November that passes and then we can address the needs of an elementary school in the future. Um, that's where we're at. We absolutely hear you, absolutely hear your concerns. Uh, we have the same concerns. So this evening, as we go into the hearing of the public, uh, I would ask that you approach the podium. If you've already signed in, if you could just state your name um, and then you, we allocate three minutes per person. We don't necessarily engage every single person. Uh, more times than not, we will defer to follow up with you at a later date and we'll make sure that the right people uh, address those issues. I know I've spoken to uh, some of you here. I know there's been email and phone call conversations and we do have clarifications from the state of uh, Ohio Department of Education as far as how they identify the two mile radius. So we have clarification on that as well. So we're going to open up the floor for hearing of the public. So again, approach the podium and we will allocate three minutes per person. <laughs> Hi, I am Jennifer Brailler. 
and I'm at 33190 Boulder Drive. Um, I'm a parent, I'm a citizen, and um, I'm a voter, <laughs> and I'm a supporter of this polls, and I'm very happy to, um, from working at Liberty, happy to hear that those doors are there because I've been a substitute teacher in there. <laughs> and I know, <laughs> I know what it's like. I'm, not, I'm, I'm happy, I'm so happy. I'm like, oh, yay! <laughs> Good news. I'm very happy to hear that. And um, I have um, been very proud of the schools and everything that you do. I do see that as a parent. I see that you're working hard. I see my kids succeeding in this community and the school district. So I'm proud of my school and teachers that are that. Um, I also care about my neighbors, in my community. And I always said to myself, if I um, needed to become a bus driver, <laughs> I would. And I, I thought about being a bus driver here at the school as well. <laughs> I say I've been a substitute teacher, I've been a bus driver. And um, I, um, I think that in a way that is like coming to fruition a little bit more me, um, with the two mile radius um, ish. Um, and although I'm thinking, I'm thinking about my neighborhood, I could bust my neighborhood kids, I can get them in my car. I went and purchased a vehicle, a new vehicle, so I could get more kids in the car if we need to. Now, that's me going above and beyond and caring about my neighbors, but um, I, as a citizen, I got the email, or pardon me, as a, as a parent, I got an email uh, from the school district back in June, stating everything that was gonna be changed because the bond issue didn't pass. And very happy with the emails, whoever sent that one out, it was June 28th. I don't know where these come from, if it comes from a certain department, but um, just the email it makes it user-friendly. There's clicks to links, Easy for the parents to get to. If you're on your smartphone, you can go right there and get to it. Um, happy to have that, happy to have those links. Uh, the email from, that we got about the, by the list of all the um, streets that would not have any service. Um, very short text with this. Um, don't know, again, it doesn't say who is coming from North, North Ridgeville City Schools no links to the actual list. No, if you have any questions, who do you talk to? So I sent an email out to some people that I thought, just, just me knowing that a little bit um, from being a substitute teacher and having come to these meetings before. Um, so I sent that out and Mr. Yonker replied to me and um, I had asked for, I replied to him and I asked for some more information, which um, I understand um, you have, so I'll be interested in seeing that information and thank you. Um, I, my first issue with the, the, the main issue is that this, on my street, the bus is going to pass my house and seven other students' house to pick up a possible one student down at the end of our street. The bus turns around, doesn't go down to the circle and it comes back. So that to me is kind of like, ah, you know, because of where you live, you're not getting a bus, but it's driving past your house. So that's where I'm like, why won't they pick us up? So that's a conversation with my neighbors. Um, and um, we're getting the information and I appreciate that. And my, my wish is that this transportation email, this is the, the cut that you've chosen to do that there's more information for the parent. Um, the time that I've spent with my neighbor and the time that we've you've had looking up the information about where does the two mile thing reach, what entrance point of that, I feel that should have been taken care of before this email went out. Best practice, I think that, that this email should have included even a frequently asked questions. Hey, you're, you're not gonna get busted anymore. Um, here's why, and maybe a you know, user-friendly <laughs> thing with this, um, clicks to links, um, things. I realized, and I, I, I'm grateful that this came out when it did. I know that you have timeframes, but I know you had to get that information out. 
I just wish that it's a little bit easier for the parent to get that information and had all of these questions maybe even asked before this email went out to the parents. I know there was a short time frame from when the was voted on and what we had to do, but um, wish that this would have can come out a different way. So that was my main criticism of this. And I, I am a volunteer. I will volunteer. I will go restart. I'll look up stuff. You can have a parent volunteer um, board that we, when we're going to roll out these cuts and if it's affecting parents, which they might all be affecting if we have to take more cuts, um, which I hope not. I, maybe there should, the, do, you know, do we need another group of people? Do we need a volunteer people to see how this is gonna look when it goes out in the email, when it goes out to the public? So that's it. Thank you, Deb. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello, Thank you. I am Marty Chevelle. I have talked to Frank and Matt both on the phone and also emailed with Roxanne, and I thank you guys for your time. I'm here, I live on Boulder. I've used Jen's bus service with our high schoolers last year, and we're trying to figure out something. Both have minivans, but we have too many kids too, so that's also part of the problem. Um, we are at the cutoff for the two miles. We're like 1.9. We even have somebody here who's also on Boulder, who's two houses from the cutoff. I understand that you guys have to take your measurements. We've talked about how those are determined. Um, just today, new information came in and was shared with me and it was technically the curb of the driveway to the school. So using the drop off points for the parents is the nicer way to do it because who wants to go from the curb? Um, but also, because we are so close, I feel like there is a gray area for where distance can be determined. And I think there also needs to be a case by case basis where an exception can be made. We're not living in a black and white world. There's gray areas all over. So I think um, if there was a way to submit a case by case request, knowing you can't make everybody happy, I get it. But people who are so close to the two mile cutoff, there should be some way to have our voices heard. We are also, as Jen said, we live on a dead end street. The bus cannot even go down and turn around at the cul-de-sac. It has to go off carry. So it's picking up past carry on east of carry. The bus can't even go east of carry. It has to turn itself around on Cary, which is also a dead end street. And then again, pass our children again to get to the next road. So they're doing that in the morning and in the afternoon. I understand that the school district needs to save money. I get it, we didn't pass it. Shame on the 25 people who didn't come in and vote. They should have. Um, we do need the high schools. We do need the elementary. I get that. But when what is it saving the school district to pick up those seven children? What is it actually going to make a difference? Walk, make all the kids walk down to the two mile point. We are literally talking maybe 10 houses. That's how close the cutoff is. I've gone and I've driven it. And then when I talked to the transportation department and they said, oh no, we're not going based off the front of the building because that's where the school bus drop off is. <coughs> Excuse me, where I would assume they would be determining the measurements from. They're using for my fifth, or my sixth and eighth graders, they're using the three four side parent drop off. Well, why? Which is one of the things that I've discussed with Frank and with Matt. <coughs> and he about. Why are they using the side of the building that my kids don't even go to. And I get, now that we have more clarification, it's not necessarily black and white because we're not using the curb, which thank goodness for that, because that's a good distance. But why can't 
you at least use the side of the building that your children belong on. So that's one, or if that would cause too many problems because yes, parents have kids on both sides of the building. <clears throat> Why are we not using the school bus drop off? Because if that's where the school bus would drop them off, why would you not start your, and end your measurements there for pickup and drop off? So that's one thing. If there's a case by case exception that could be made, that would be great. Um, also, there's only two people in our transportation department and I get that. So they can't always be prompt in answering especially situations like this or where you need to see if there can be a case by case example. Parents might volunteer to help solve this problem because this is a big problem for over 350 children in the whole district. I'll volunteer to help figure out what the exceptions like can there be an exception made if, and the customer service approach from the transportation department, the two people who work there needs to be improved because when I called as a parent and getting berated, that's not how that should work. So those are some of my um, things. And as a parent, well, just as a person, I'm a numbers person. What savings, break it down for us. Give us the numbers. You want transparency? That's, I think, goal four. Transparency in your financials. If you're going to cut something, point blank, spell it out in black and white. Like, why is this happening? We get that we need buildings, but show us where's the savings coming from? Because I know transportation is not the only department that got cut, but why are we not seeing where this money is gonna go to? It's coming from where, and where is it gonna go? What's it gonna help? That stuff as a parent, that I'll be, okay. All right, so I'm not gonna get on the bus. All right, but this is why I'm not getting on the bus. Give us more information to help us not be so hurt by, yes, we're now going to two miles. And then another thing is, is even if we pass this and the new schools are built, or however it works, are you gonna put it back down to the 1.5 or is it always gonna stay at two miles from here? So those are questions that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we did share this evening some of the places that the monies are gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's substantial. It's it's this doesn't even cover those costs at this point. Um, so we, we'll work on doing a better job of providing additional information to um, to show why we're making these cuts. I completely hear what you're saying and understanding, and I understand that sometimes gray is a good place to be. But picture it from our perspective. When I open up the gray, when, when at what point do I decide you're no longer? Is it 1.9 miles I'm good with. Well, why not 2.1? Well, that's if there's why... eight kids on the street, uh, oh, but I'm not going to do nine. That puts us in a position where then we have to defend every action that we make. And that's one of the reasons that when we went to the two mile radius and when we reached out to the Ohio Department of Education for clarification to make sure that we were indeed doing it right. Again, these aren't things that we want to be doing. And I can tell you, when I was first elected to the Board of Education, we were at the two mile radius uh, when my kids were in kindergarten and first, second grade. Um, and we did go to 1.5 once the conditions made sense for us to do that. So we're all, always evaluating circumstances, especially circumstances that affect our families. Um, we want our families to feel comfortable sending their kids to our, our schools. We want our kids to succeed. And in order to do that, we're constantly evaluating what can we do better. To your point, ma'am, you're right. Some more information. We already knew how we were identifying that two mile radius, but we wanted verification from the state to be able to provide the parents to go look. This is how we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. This is the recommendation. That's how we've done the 1.5 miles for all those families. Uh, and we drive past kids every single day. Uh, and, and that's why I'm saying not everybody can get the exception, but if it's right. a case by case basis. And just, you know, just openness, like, okay, we looked at your case, here's why we will or we won't do the exception. And at, if you've exhausted all things, then it's just a, this is just where we're gonna be. This is our ruling and this is what's gonna happen for the school year. But on a case by case basis, not just rubber stamp, nope, nope. 
because some some are not going to make sense. Like for our street, take it down to the two mile, ten houses down, if that. That's where the bus stop is, because that's technically where the two mile is. And why can't that be the bus stop? Our kids are perfectly capable of walking ten houses. And because um, for me, I work. I have to worry about this. My kids don't have never gone to the before or after. I also have a high schooler. I have to figure out. That's why we started the, you know, carpooling with our neighbors. Um, so we all have all those things too. But a case by case basis, I think would be a good thing to do instead of just rubber stamping everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, Rick Santel, 34882 Cambridge Drive. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys today. Um, I appreciate everything you guys do for our school district. Uh, been very satisfied. Uh, I've got two daughters in seventh and fourth grade coming up here, and uh, so far their education has been very good. Um, my discussion tonight again is back to transportation and busing. Um, I live in Wildwood Estates, and I'm speaking for myself and my other uh, family members uh, in Wildwood. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's off of Chestnut Ridge, and between, if anybody goes to the guy with all the Christmas lights, it's that neighborhood. Um, from the front of NRAC to there, when I saw that email, like everybody else got a little upset, first thing I did was I drove it. And I drove it, and to pull into my driveway, it's 1.9 something miles to where it is 180 feet to the two mile mark. And that neighborhood um, also has one entrance. It's one small circular neighborhood with two small cul-de-sacs on it. And about 40% of that neighborhood is in outside beyond the two mile mark. So I'm asking for the opportunity that those that are inside of the two mile mark are they able to walk to one point within that neighborhood because it's all walkable, all with sidewalks, where those students could also be picked up? There's no possible way to allow them to walk to school safely as they have to walk on Chestnut Ridge with no sidewalks. Root Road has no sidewalks until 74, 33 address, which is near Bainbridge, and then up to Bainbridge to get to the school. So. The fact that two miles is 10,560 feet and I'm 180 feet away from that point is pretty trivial on understand that you do have to draw a line in the sand, but when the bus will come into that neighborhood and will circle the neighborhood and pass by other students is a hard pill to swallow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I'm Tiffany Orion. Um, we talked a lot about busing <laughs> tonight already. But um, so mine kind of plays off of that with the busing that was cut. Um, I believe I read it was like 365 students or so that was affected um, by this busing cutting. Um, but then also, you guys decided to partner with this right at home, which is more expensive than the other options. Um, for before and after care that was available you know in past years um so i'm just was kind of wondering why you know this decision was made to go with this I and mean, there's some families that probably won't be able to afford that i don't you know uh, you know so i really feel for them um, if they can't afford that and they got to figure out how you know to, to manage all this stuff with with no buses and um, also then the extra traffic if we're going to have a lot of extra parents dropping off their kids, all 365 kids, you know, I don't know how many cars that might be. Um, I, how, how is all this going to be managed? You know, I mean, uh, that, that's, that's basically, you know, I don't know if we know where the, if the drop offs are going to be the same as they were in years past um, or last year for, for um, dropping off in the morning and picking up and stuff like that. But um, 
this is also information that parents are going to need to figure out so that they can plan their morning because a lot of parents work. They got to figure out how they're going to get their kid to school, where they're going to be dropping them off, how much time this might be, you know, in order for them to um, get themselves to work. So basically, all I have. <laughs> that's basically all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't write my name on the board. Danielle, I live on Boulder next to Jen and Margie. The bus stop currently that my children go to is right outside my door. So I would like to know why my kids would not be able to get on that bus if they're going to still be at that bus stop. So I'm just, I guess I was just told it's west of Cary and I, or what, east of Cary? East of Cary. And I'm west. the house west of Cary. Just the Where? one right next to it, <laughs> right across from the street. And I also have five children, two of them newborn, or not newborn now, they're one years old, but they're twins. I don't have, and I have a high schooler this year, which now I'm already gonna have to take him to school. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get one high schooler to school, come home, or the other way around. I don't even know who starts first. Also, why getting two babies in a car with me. So the bus is very helpful. And let alone, I don't work, but I do, have stay home children, which is hard for me to do with three children that have to get out the door, which is hard enough as it is currently to get them on the bus. <laughs> so I know how it is when they miss the bus, <coughs> gather up everybody and get them in the car. I can't imagine if I have to do that every day for my schedule and my time. And I don't understand. Now, I thought it was weird that we had like three bus stops on our street when our street's not that long. Why can't everybody just walk to one bus stop? I mean, I think the kids are kind of getting spoiled at the moment. I mean, there's three stops on one street. I mean, the kids from the end of the street already have to walk down in front of my house. So why couldn't my kids walk right to the bus stop? That's right in front of the house. <laughs> Unless you guys are switching the bus stop, which I don't know. I haven't looked that information up. But currently, it's right outside my house. So if my kids can't get on it, I don't see why. I guess that was my two cents on the situation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If you could, if you didn't sign, can you please make sure you fill out so we have your information? I will, thank you. We appreciate you coming in tonight. Uh, we appreciate the emails and the phone calls. Too often these conversations are had outside or on the, God forbid, the forum. Uh, so we do appreciate you coming in and addressing us directly. And again, they, I started off by saying, we, we hear you, we read the emails, we return the phone calls. We're addressing these issues to the best of our ability. Um, I'm, we're not making any promises, but we can't. Um, we'll follow up. That's why it's important that we have your, your information uh, in regards to the cost for right at school. Uh, Mr. Yonker would be the person to reach out to. He could address that because my understanding was right at school was actually <laughs> cheaper than the Y. Um, but again, he can address that. Uh, he more than likely would be the individual to talk to about drop off and whether or not any changes are going to be made to that, uh, assuming those decisions have been made. We're, we're, we're taking a look at all this. Uh, schools are rapidly approaching and we're trying to address this. And we, we are perfectly aware that there's going to be 365 new students potentially being dropped off at, at all our buildings. And we already know we're backed up on Lear Nagel and on Ranger Way. We're, we're aware of it. Uh, uh, very aware of it. We deal with it daily on trying to get that traffic in and out of all our buildings and get on all our students in the building safely while all that's going on. So uh, we will be addressing those issues. How it looks, I don't know yet. Uh, they might know. I don't. <laughs> so again, thank you for coming in this evening. Uh, Mr. Rocker, can I say something? Absolutely. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you for coming in and the way that you uh, presented yourselves tonight um, to the board. And you give us really um, constructive feedback and some things that we can think of. And oftentimes, as, I mean, I've been on the board for almost 13 years and oftentimes when parents come in, they just yell at us. Um, none of you did that tonight. And I just want to tell you, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, thank you for recognizing the hard work that the administrators and, and the board and the staff do for the children. I, I'd appreciate that as well. Um, I've, I've written down lots of notes and um, you know, so I, you gave, you all have given me something to think about and something that, you know, we'll talk about with the administrators and 
um, so some questions that now I can ask and maybe there can, you know, be some wiggle room. Maybe there can't, like you said, you know, there maybe there's no wiggle room to be had anywhere, but um, I do have, you've provoked some thoughts. So I appreciate you, all of you. Thank you. One thing I want to mention, uh, which came in an email to me today, and, and I agree. I thank you all. You know, I've had some email conversations with some of you, and I appreciate that. Um, the question about routes and when they'll be released, um, you know, and I know Mrs. McCarthy is probably going to have some questions and you know, some things we need to talk through. I always do. That they <laughs> that for me. <laughs> but the. Um, you know, the routes, and, and I'm also doing this, I, there are some people on for public purposes, can't be re released until the very beginning of August, sometimes into the second week. And that really is due to the growth that we see right now going into August. And if we were to release routes, likely those will change, whether it's due to that increase of enrollment and, oh, we need to get to school or the variance forms that are filled out. So those two things factor into how those routes are determined. So for the board, if, if you are asked that question, for the public, um, those generally won't come out until the end of the first week, maybe beginning of the second week of August specifically. Sounds agenda. Mr. Rocco, do we have time for announcements? Yep. I know you had announcements, but I, I just want to mention the citizens of um, Citizens for Better Schools has a fundraising event coming up um, to support a bond issue that we'll be voting on tonight. And if I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I got the date wrong, but I believe it's Wednesday, August 9th at 6 p.m. It's a cornhole tournament. Um, sounds like a lot of fun and um, just want people to be aware of that. The location for that, it was just determined to be at the old Huntington Bank on Center Ridge Road right next to Dairy Grove. The registration is online. Oh, the old Citizens Bank. Because Huntington's still there. Chemical Bank. Chemical Bank, Citizens Bank. Huntington. It's been a hundred different banks, right? <laughs> that bank. <laughs> right next to Dairy Grove. Right, right next to Dairy Grove. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There is one other announcement uh, for the public as well as those here. Thursday night is the Ridgeville Ready pop up party. Uh, that will be at the senior center. Hopefully we'll be able to be outdoors depending on the weather, um, but schools will have a booth and we really are trying to imagine North Ridgeville. So um, we are going to have something with the schools. Imagine a school year that uh, students will be able to fill out and we'll have some information available for principals upon their return directly from their students and also some information in terms of where our visitors are coming from within the city and what buildings they belong to as children. So we're excited, we'll be manning a, a group there. So if you are available from six to eight on Thursday, pop out to the pop-up party. And one last thing, it's always fun when you walk into Walmart, school supplies are filling the shelf. <laughs> Leave them now because they don't restock. <laughs> they really don't anymore. They do like, I thought they used to, but. Inflation has hit those hard too, so beware. All right, we're going to move into the consent agenda. Ms. Tamira. Thank you. Um, education report. We have several agreements to consider. These agreements are annual renewals of contracts for special education services, and special education transportation that are required to meet the individual needs of students with disabilities. In addition, there's a renewal contract for counseling and mental health services for North Ridgeville students. These agreements include the following organizations, Belfair, Applewood Centers, Education Alternatives, Professional Van Service, Education Alternatives Transportation Services, Northeast Ohio Educational Service Center, and Winston Counseling and Consulting. <coughs> Additionally, we have the 2023-2024 District Goals for your consideration and approval. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Communication <laughs> report, Mr. Grigsby. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education accept the following gifts with appreciation. A donation of $3,275 was donated by the NRHS Soccer Boosters 
to purchase girls' soccer warm-ups for the North Ridgeville High School girls' soccer team. $200 was donated by Harbor Creek Tools to go towards the Project Lead the Way program, and seven cheerleading spirit signs and sign bag were donated by Barcy Spirit Fashion Company to the middle school cheer program. And we thank our community for the tremendous support of our schools and students. Thank you. Buildings and operations report. We have two items to consider under buildings and operations. First, we have the district's annual Aramark food service contract. And next is the declaration of impracticality for schools listed and offer payment in lieu of transportation to the parents, guardians of those schools. This concludes the buildings and operations report. Human resources report, Ms. Saxon. Yes, we have a number of items in the human resources report. Five certified staff resignations, one non-represented support staff resignation, five support staff resignations, seven certified staff appointments, one extended service day contract, four support staff appointments, two supplemental contracts, two non-NREA supplemental contracts, nine support staff substitute contracts, one unpaid volunteer recognition, support staff substitute rates of pay, four support staff contract adjustments, one administrative consulting contract. I move to approve the human resources items in one reading. Second. That's actually the uh, uh, motion and a second for the entire consent agenda. So who motioned that? I did. Ms. Jackson. That can be found on page 12. Ms. Tamara, you second? Yes. Thank you. Is there any discussion this evening? Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Finance Auditor Report, Ms. McCarthy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vaca. We have um, two items for consideration under the Finance Audit Report. The first is a uh, financial reports for June 2023. And I move to approve the financial report and the report of interest and investments for June 2023. Second. Moved by Ms. McCarthy, second by Mr. Grigsby. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Second item is a big one. Get ready. I'm ready. <laughs> we have a resolution determining to proceed with a bond issue election. It's resolution number two. Maximum principal amount of $143,015,000. For the purpose of constructing, adding to, renovating, furnishing, equipping, or otherwise improving school district buildings and facilities, and acquiring, clearing, improving, and equipping their sites. Maximum term of 37 years, estimated interest rate of 5%. To be submitted to the electors of the school district on the November 7, 2023 election. I move to approve this very important resolution in one reading. Second. Move by Ms. McCarthy, second by Ms. Tamira. Roll call, please. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. All right, it's recommended the Board of Education adjourn this regular meeting. Second. 657. Ms. Tamira, second by Ms. Saxon. Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Thank you, everybody.